We're rolling. How you doing, man? Doing great. Uh, I appreciate you doing this. Yeah, I'm it's, thankful it's, it's for the opportunity. Cool yeah, definitely. There's a skewer. Yes. You break right into the marshmallows, huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, did you want to do the honors with uh, with lighting it? Sure, I'll try this thing. I've never okay. seen a fire pit quite so efficient. How much do you add? Just that much? Uh, you can add quite a bit. This stuff was out of out of stock for a while there, you know. The was it? Everyone was making their own hand sanitizers just for oh, COVID. Oh really? That's okay, just yeah, the yeah. jam. I remember that, man. <laughs> Everybody needed some isopropyl alcohol for that. I used it to make panels. I I used it to. Oh really? When I'm. I didn't know that. I buff back the aluminum. Uh, it's like a coating on the aluminum for my oil paintings, and then apply. Is it good to go? Yeah, yeah. Is this thing yeah. explosive? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just go for it. Oh God. Yeah, there you oh, go. Nice, okay. Yeah, yeah, there we go. That's freaking sweet. Yeah, right? Super cool. We should totally get one. I think I'm going to. Yeah, yeah. It's a good, I don't know, it's a good party trick kind of thing. And I don't know, it's it's one of those things that it's made the van a lot homier. Yeah. It's made it a lot more fun to have people in it, too. Yeah. Fire is a weird, out here in Montana, we do bonfires incessantly. It is like yep. the thing. Right. And it's hard when the smoke starts getting bad and fires are less of an allowed thing. This is a cool deal because it's not as hazardous probably as a right. wood fire is. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Yeah, sorry about the marshmallows there. Oh, I'm gonna dig one out of here. I right, should, 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 should sure that's still I saw your Bob Ross. Oh, nice, dude. Yeah, I was like, dude, I got a Bob too. Yeah, yeah. I like having Bob here for this kind of conversation. Heck yeah, man. <laughs> um, I haven't quite uh, gotten my uh, marshmallow roasting skills down. I, I, I think by the end of this, I'll, I'll be... I heard uh, you like burning them, so I'm going to... I do, yeah. I, I, I've never cooked on such a fire, though, so this will be a new test for me, too. Yeah, right. This is great. Yeah. And sorry, sorry, again, sorry about the stale marshmallows. <laughs> <laughs> I only have one bag of marshmallows that I bought a while ago. They... It's like, you know, I'm pretty sure they don't expire. No, they can't go bad. Yeah. I've never seen a marshmallow mold or anything. Yeah, yeah. I think ants can get into them. That's probably the worst thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, well, so I, I guess you want to introduce yourself at all? Yeah, yeah sure. Um, yeah, my name is Ken Yaris. I am a landscape painter out here in the beautiful country of Montana, live, live right outside of Glacier Park, which has become a huge inspiration for me in, in the last few years, being able to really steep myself in that right. that place's beauty and getting, you know, falling in love with the backcountry there. And backpacking in general has been a sport that's slowly just made it a huge part of my life and right. my paintings have always been there too but anyway i've been lucky enough to be able to make a little career selling my landscape paintings and they're all oils on like i, said, I paint on panel mostly but they work with galleries kind of throughout yeah throughout the west and uh right yeah just applying some of that academic knowledge i took with portraiture and figure and yeah, yeah. Well, so you, you, you went to GCA, right? Yeah, I studied G I didn't study long at GCA, to be honest. I, yeah. I started, most of my foundation was really at this academy called the Ashland Academy of Art, which yeah. is now, I believe, called Atele Maui. Yeah. Semyon Bilmez is the uh, lead instructor there. He's an absolutely, you know, wonderful teacher, but the Russian intensity is, is very palpable. He's, he's a very intense Russian man that studied in soviet russia just uh right. he brought all that with him and it's it's amazing resource to have i was very thankful for that bringing or that you know introduction to the academic world not that it was an easy one because he he uh you know and maybe it's a part of the academic thing where you're supposed to leave school crying but like it, right. it didn't happen very much but it did happen you know? yeah yeah just intense right so uh when they decided to move the school to hawaii i opted to try out a new academy and that's when i found my way over to gca in New York and that was the training there was great also you know worked with Jacob Collins and a lot of the other professors there Edward Minoff and right. Tony Cernage and Scott Waddell um just awesome you know yeah. powerhouses and right. New York City was just horrible 
Yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't yeah. do it. That was like the city. Like, if, if anything made me a landscape painter, it was my time in New York. Right. Yeah. Well, it, it seems interesting. I mean, it seems like all of the great schools are in metropolitan areas, whether it's St. Petersburg or Grand Central Academy or, you know, uh, Florence Academy or... Erickson Until my or, school. Yeah. No, it's... it's. I, I think it's there for a lot of reasons. The Met was a fantastic resource that we could all right. tap into. And for ed, art education, maybe it's just the the prestigiousness that cities kind of bring to the the picture. Yeah. I don't know. Right. And they, I mean, they, were, they were studying, there was figurative is what they were working with. It was, yeah, yeah. It was a lot of narrative based work or, you know, still life and just none of that really, I, I won't say that the skills didn't apply to landscape because they absolutely have, but right. I knew pretty quickly after deciding that landscape was going to be one of my, my pursuits that I needed to come back to where the landscape was right. inspiring to me. Yeah. Well, it's something I've seen, I went to the Watts Atelier for a few years and, you know, I've been studying at various art schools just all around the world. And yeah. So something that I've seen that's really common is that, I, you know, I don't want to say common, but I see a lot of people like get into the school rut where they don't stop studying necessarily. Yeah. You're you never know? good enough. Never good enough. And I, I fell into that for a long time too. And I still have that mindset of, you know, hyper academic mm -hmm. focused drawing where when I'm not doing things that are academic, I feel guilty or something, yeah. you know? Yeah. Oh, and I, I, I'm, I guess something, you know, the part of this podcast is like, you know, trying to talk to people that have like found their own creative, you know, it's like you went through this highly academic figurative thing and now you're mm -hmm. doing this landscape thing in Montana and yeah. it's like completely different <laughs> from your education, but it's still applicable. You know? Oh yeah. Um, I mean, and, and I'm sure you would agree or, or attest to the same fundamental truth that say that, you know, drawing is the so my neighbors come by with their turbo diesels we're in montana after all <laughs> they uh i like to think of it as akin to learning like a language and the poetry that all the stuff we're shooting for is past with those fundamentals and yeah. like drawing is just one of those fundamentals and i think there's that i don't know i get made fun of sometimes that that you know it's like those who can do you know, you've heard this, like those who can do, do those who can't do teach. Yeah, yeah. Like those yeah. who could paint would do figurative or narrative right. or multifigurative or whatever the Holy grail is of, of the academic learning. Right. And those who can't do paint landscape. Yeah. Like if you couldn't right. draw, well, at least you always can paint landscape. Yeah. And that's maybe true to some level, but it's also bogus in the sense that really, really excellent landscape painting involves really accurate drawing and yeah. learning those tools is, um, uh, it's not, totally limited to just studying the landscape you know yeah absolutely and I, honestly i found that like I, I mean i've done a lot of figurative studying and i suck at landscape stuff you know? <laughs> and it's like again it's 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 i think that that particular way of explaining landscape stuff is you know it, it, it's obviously way more complicated than that oh yeah yeah and to make a beautiful landscape you know beautiful limit uh landscape or you know concept art piece or something it takes a lot more than just uh you know, knowing a, knowing a lot of figurative stuff and knowing a lot of academic stuff, and it, it has a lot to do with storytelling and mm. narrative and, and all that kind of stuff. Well, there's something that I think in our day and age, people want fast things. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they want to learn something quickly and find you. You, you can spend much time on YouTube. It's always about the shortcut, the how to, right. and a big aspect of the landscape painting in general. Is spending time plein air painting, yeah, and there's no shortcuts. I mean, we know when we were painting the other day, it's just like it's just you learn and it, it kind of sucks, it hurts, yeah. you get yeah. you get rattled by it over and over again. <laughs> yeah. But oddly enough, when you spend some time like me, or it's, it's you know five, six years, ten years, whatever, it's I don't even know anymore. Like being a part of that process, being standing out in the light and and watching storms come and go, and watching yeah. suns sets, and yeah. you, you start to feel and see things a little differently yeah. with all that exposure, and you yeah. can't just you know. I, you see some of the folks they just they go out and get a landscape photo or they even pay other people to take photos for them and yeah. they try to make a moving or powerful landscape painting but they're going to miss so much of that soul and spirit that would be there if they experienced it well and we, 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 we've been talking about it the past couple of days where it's like it doesn't necessarily matter what the quality of the painting is it's more about the story that's being told oh, absolutely you know and it's like you know when you go out into uh and do a landscape painting and you're like you're going out on your own and getting a reference yourself you're going yes. on the adventure oh man yeah you know, you're you're actually you know uh 
Are, 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 are you hot, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> the fire is warm, and also the the yeah, sun yeah, out here in Montana. It seems like you're in direct sunlight. Oh. Do you want to do you want to shut, shut this thing off? Or? No, that's fine. I think yeah. I'll be all right. I'm gonna have another marshmallow. Okay, like, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. It's a. Uh, it is fucking hot in here. Oh, it like gets. Uh, that's the part of the van life, man. I have my oh, own yeah. van, and so I know that. Well, it, it's confined, insulated space. Yeah. So, so this is like <laughs> actually, you know. And the weather outside here is yeah, it's at least ninety something today. So yeah, yeah. I made the mistake of wearing blue jeans. Yeah, yeah. Sweater on and stuff. <laughs> You're impressed with the sweater. Yeah. Yeah, I think that, that and that's the part where it's it's funny. I've had to teach a workshop or do any kind of. It's like, you know, that kind of soul that's in it, and the kind of repetition or, or like experiential value that helps make. And I think it's the same thing with which helps good portraiture and other things. And people being able to react and resonate with something deeper. It's not necessarily ultimately that person needs to know that person yeah. to make a good portrait, but um, knowing and loving people is probably a big part of making Absolutely. good portraiture, you know? Yeah, well, and I, I think it's, um, um, like, when you're doing a portrait, you're telling the story of that person, and art is only ever about how other people feel about it. You know? Yeah. When you look at it objectively, a painting is just, like, oil goop on a piece <laughs> of, like, paper or canvas, essentially. Yeah. Like, you could break it down as being this ultimately meaningless thing pretty pretty quickly. Yeah. Know? But it's, it's obviously not that. I mean, people will pay $500 million for a painting, you know. It's got or, a lot of sociology mixed in with it and a lot of experiential value, what people you perceive. I don't know anything about it, to be honest. It's a it's a always bamboozling part of... It's confusing, right? Oh, yeah. And you try to try to make sense of it. And at the end of the day, I... I it, it can feel selfish, but you just go back to some of those intrinsic truths. Oh, oh no. You know, of, of what matters to you, what matters to the people you love, and what right. what other people are seeing in, in your subject. Or And it's I think it's different for the commercial artists that are really actually out there to make really incredible imagery and right. tap into something maybe more um, viable. But for the fine art realm, you're really out there just in the, the ether a little bit, trying to make sense of how messy life can be in a state of values and yeah yeah well it, it's strange i mean it's like a, i was i've been talking to a lot of people about this where the concepts for learning how to draw and paint really well can be explained in like an hour yeah <laughs> you know it's like gesture can be explained in 15 minutes and so can proportion mm -hmm. you know everything can be explained very quickly but it takes like 30 years <laughs> to actually understand it you know yeah to yeah. make it have make sense in your hand when you're trying to move it. Yeah, yeah. It's like how do you you know tell a story with gesture, you know, or just gesture, or just color, or just you know using a landscape, and how do you evoke emotion? And, you well, I'd say you get back where that academia stuff is, where you can be just hamstringed by the challenge of it. Yeah. And that's maybe not. I think in the trying, we talked earlier about trying and failing, and how that's yeah. like a part of the. If, if we were to go out and try to learn to draw and only expect to feel successes or in trying to make important art is probably like the same kind of thing. Like you're going to yeah. try and you're not going to be accepted and no. that's going to hurt really bad, right. <laughs> but you got to keep showing up to the easel to some degree and, yeah. and willing to trust your vision or trust your, your, uh, what matters and hope that it can resonate somehow. But it definitely takes a, yeah, well, it's part of the reason I'm really impressed with guys like you, like doing the whole fine art thing, making oil paintings, like, because it's hard. It's it's way harder than just like being a banker mm -hmm. or being a lawyer or even just like oh, doing yeah. it digitally, right? It's like doing it digitally is like, it's like the more efficient way to do it. But there's something about the story of you doing it traditionally that's important to you, you know? Oh, yeah. And that pursuit was hard to find even to say, I mean, I was thankful for the academia because it, it in the modern state art school or any like art center in some of those places would have some of these classes but to learn some of the long-standing history of oil painting and drawing and like yeah it's just like yeah you took drawing one drawing two you're good right drawing three maybe yeah. anatomy class it's like no you got to just do it you got to be yeah, sitting yeah. in front of a thing right do it for six hours a day and oddly enough you end up doing it as an artist professionally and you're still in your easel eight hours a day yeah, yeah. um not that it always works out that way but there's just no shortcut to those. I always say hours for powers. Yeah, you know, yeah. like you gotta trade. You gotta trade that out, yeah. and and don't lose your heart along the way. That's the part. That's, like you said, some people just get so caught up in the yeah, like right. being better, being better. And um, Seth Godin is a I don't know you no linchpin man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's got one called Tribes that yeah, yeah. he talked in that book that was it resonated with me. That he's like you you tried and like you try and fail and like always kind of keep 
having momentum that going that goes forward yeah but in the failing or in the even putting something out like a lot of painters i know they do the i'm not good enough yet yeah and it's like you don't even probably know what good even totally is until you go out and like fail a little bit and yeah. you start to realize well maybe i actually was kind of onto something now if i go back and look at paintings from like eight years ago i can still see little shreds of like right. what i paint right now you know yeah. but most of the painting is not what i paint right now and it's not very yeah. good and it's like okay so i was you know if it's only say 10 percent of your art is something really great yeah. you got to just put it as much out that hope that 10 percent will actually resonate somewhere well know? absolutely and I, I don't know in the past when i've been one of those guys that's like disappointed with, with my progress i think it's an ego thing or it's like an entitlement thing it's like a i haven't put in the effort but i want to be further than i am you know yeah and it's like I, that's you know extremely common and that's and, why i would leave, leave school crying dude because yeah, it would yeah. be like hey I, i've been working at this for two years Right. How could I still not get the proportions right of someone's forehead? Yeah, like, I still suck. Yeah, yeah it's, like, like, oh, it's, it's, it's so <laughs> obvious, right? And then it's like, but you still keep making that mistake, and it's incredibly humbling. You know? Oh man, yeah, it is. Yeah, and it's it's strange. It's really, you know, there's a Robert Henri quote. It's like, be a master at whatever level that may mean, you know. And it's like, I don't think mastery is necessarily being, uh, you know, master of your craft, doing it for ten thousand hours, all the right, right, you know, yeah, boxes you check, fixate it. it. Yeah, it's way more of a mindset, I think. You know, it's like not being judgmental towards it, you know, being okay with where you're at, having complete control of your craft to the degree that you know it, and mm -hmm. having complete confidence in what you know, you know. And and confidence that what you don't know is like, I mean, like back to the instant gratification thing where people think, oh, I want to be done with this faster. I want to get to like a certain like level of skill or something you know and like that's the fixated thing and they don't they forget that they're trying to make something yeah, along with that absolutely and like yeah for me it's like you just i'm never going to be done learning st yeah. stuff like it's not like i'm going to get to a skill set where suddenly i'm the best landscape painter that's ever been on the planet and everyone's going to know it and like that still would not be that's one it's not the end goal because it's not even true it's one of these you know hyper competitive bullshit things that society kind of structures for artists or all things you know we just like like to compete but but for you as an artist it's like trying to have that healthy relationship it's just like i'm gonna keep doing this forever yeah you you've been talking about that million what do you call it the billion dollar billion yeah, dollar yeah, question the billion dollar question like, would you keep doing it if you had a billion dollars and right. for me the, the painting the landscape just spending time in the mountains my lifestyle is like hell yeah i'm just trying to get more money now so i can be maybe right. more stable but like the functional part of my life is already so yeah. so sweet you know well, that man, I, you would still do bad painting bad paintings if you had a billion dollars yeah, you know yeah. it's like you'd still make the same mistakes and it's like you know oh, having yeah. a billion dollars and having all this you know it, like if you started microsoft you'd still be you know bad at something else you know it's mm -hmm. like i think that's part of it is like um no matter how finished you are you're never finished you yeah know? even if you become the world's most famous artist and Oh, you know, I almost don't want that. It's stressful, well, you know. But but it's also like like if you did the best painting you've ever done and will ever do tomorrow, do you stop painting? Right. Like, <laughs> and if you do, then maybe you're not painting for the right reasons, you know. I'm already worried that I've passed my best work. Right. I'm I'm gonna spend the next thirty years kind of just sucking. But it's yeah. I think again, you're not you don't want to fix it on that kind of thing. You, and, you know, learning and growing in incremental ways is something I've I've worked on trying to facilitate like what that growth looks like functionally and like abstractly like what it feels like as an artist but then for me like my pine trees for a long time yeah. i was like i suck at painting pine trees yeah. they're a huge part of what i paint and they're all over the place out here in montana yeah so trying to become whatever the best pine tree painter that i can be i'm yeah. not out looking at everybody that's ever painted trees i'm not reading every book that's been written about trees but every time i try to get to the easel and, and dealing with a pine tree it's like yeah can I make this better? And right. that's just one part of it. Water was a big thing for me for a couple of years. I worked yeah. really hard. I was like, how do I make water better? Yeah. And growing in that and spending time, it took years for painting, yeah, yeah. you know, a lot. Yeah. And I didn't do anything like hyper aggressive where I was like setting up, you know, really precise studies or anything. It was like, every time I'm going to paint, I want to put 10% more effort into that Absolutely. and grow a little. And it, it paid off. It made it definitely make leaps and bounds that way. Well, and, and if you were like, I'm going to become... Uh, the best water painter in six months. <laughs> yeah. Now, that would be, like, too much, too quick. Oh, you know? yeah. And it's like a... It, it, I think we were talking about having little successes and failures earlier on, where it's yeah. like, 
you know, I meet a lot of students, art students who are like, I'm going to become a professional artist in a year because you know, yeah. that's all I have, you know? Yeah. It's like, you're setting yourself up for failure. You know, like even if you do get good enough technically, there's still so much more to being, Oh man. You know, and there's so much that's out of your control. Even like, like Shiki would say in the fine art world, being a technically skilled painter is uh, a very small proportion of what makes somebody successful in the fine art realm. I mean, if you start yeah. to include the abstract, market involved with all that it's like being a technician is one of the most unimportant skills but absolutely building a good network of people that share your vision you know peer structures have been a huge part for me like i share a studio with an awesome painter named richie carter who's who couldn't be here this week he's out gallivanting in colorado uh, he's been a huge part of my success and just having a peer pressure dynamic having a, a someone to sh help share the suffering and right. they help connect you with people i helped connect him with people and yeah. you build relevance with that shared suffering sometimes I think. absolutely and it's we were talking about this earlier where it's like as artists you're not really sharing paintings you're selling ideas you mm -hmm. know and mm -hmm. the way that i see learning technician being a technician as an artist it's more of like um learning what an independent clause is in, in english you yeah know? I, I couldn't define what an independent clause is <laughs> <Me neither. laughs> you know? uh, but i can speak perfectly fine english i can yeah. communicate to you like a you know a normal human being and um, and I think that's the same way with studying academic anatomy or, you know, academic stuff to past the point where it's, it's kind of lost its utility. It yeah. Yeah. You know, you don't need to, like, I don't know the purpose of a semicolon, you know, <laughs> maybe I'm a moron for not doing that, but it's like, I could you know, write a sentence and, you know, get far I enough. throw them out there occasionally just to seem smart, but probably end up looking more dumb. Yeah. It, yeah, right. it, yeah. It's, it is the end goal is so important for that and and so many artists i think or or you know the schools can help facilitate some of this I and mean, they they're invested in keeping you in school too and yeah. like to let somebody go early and say hey yeah you you're good enough go out and like i was kind of a rebel and quit school early you know and and maybe trusted enough in my vision and know knew that like okay I'm, i want to do landscape this will be my 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 direction but yeah you know it's not easy to get to that place no, no, it's not. And but I think it, it has nothing to do with being in school. I think it has yeah. everything to do with taking risks. And yeah. we were talking about it earlier, where it's uh, starting a business doesn't start with doing somebody else's idea. You know, yeah, it starts with doing your own thing. Because starting a really successful business, it's like there are people that have drawn portrait paintings of rich people. There are people that have done you know, like you have to do something different, but also uniquely you. Yeah, you know? and your mistakes and your failures are a big part of determining you know like what like what you're going to be doing differently from everyone else yeah oh man the failures gotta have them yeah well in, in terms of my weaknesses it's like i'm not as good of a you know uh a draftsman as a lot of the people that i know but you know i can talk you know and i can drive around in a van and you know it's Get like sweet sketchy van well seriously but yeah. it, it's like that's that's the thing that i can actually do you know yeah. it's like i don't feel confident in my art skills but i feel confident in my ability to go and like you know, talk to people and like, yeah, and you're yeah. telling stories too, and, and connecting yeah. people, and and you've inspired me greatly in our time spending, you know, spending time discussing all this stuff. It's it's that motivational element and that uh, camaraderie is just like it's so important, so valuable, and and Absolutely. maybe it's different for the industrial guys. I mean, the, the ones that are working in firms with a bunch of cohorts, or I mean, I didn't even get that. My school had like eight students in it's in my class you know, like i didn't even have like yeah yeah people my own age to go to school with in the right. the academic part that i ended up in but anyway the, like yeah sharing time with other people sharing that vision is so important and i'm jealous sometimes people have whole offices of young people or right. or you know really talented people to share time with it's absolutely that's a powerful thing to have well but it, you know it's like everyone wants what they don't have you know? and it's <laughs> yeah, like, they probably want to be an isolated studio yeah, with yeah. their it's peace and quiet. Do whatever they want. Be in Montana. Be, <laughs> hang, hang out with their goats and stuff. Yeah. You know, go on hikes to Glacier. And, you know, I, I, I think people are products of their own environments and their strengths and weaknesses to being either environment. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, like, you're going to learn a lot from other people if you're in, a, like, an office with a ton of other talented artists, but you're also going to be pulled in a bunch of different directions. That's so true. Yeah. I've had that with my, my relationship with Instagram has had to go through various stages because I get on there and see great paintings and yeah. great painters and get can't help but get like swayed a little bit and mm -hmm. then it's like oh i don't want i you know i want to stay in that sweet spot where you're mm -hmm. inspired a little bit and you're motivated by what 
other great people are making. But if you're not tapped in, especially as a fine artist, where the independent element and your uniqueness in there is, is you know, you always hear people say, oh, you don't go search for your style. Don't search for your style. Right. People, you can tell when people are forcing it. You know, yeah. they're like just trying to like create something that they think will sell. Or, yeah. But when you're trying to do what resonates with you, man, it's, there's no shortcuts. Absolutely. And there's not even really like classes for that. I don't think. I mean, maybe there's some places they teach I, I, that kind I, of thing. I think those classes are like, you know, going on hikes or, yeah. you know, taking peyote in the desert or something. <laughs> you know, it's like. I haven't tried that part yet. I, I haven't tried it either, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe it'll help. You know? um, but I don't know, man. It's one of those things where it, it's it's something you can't teach, but it's obvious. You know, yeah. it's so obvious you can't teach it, right? Yeah. Um, it's one of those like, yeah, it's like if you want to go make something, you go make something. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't wait for 10 years to train to go and do it you know i mean you need some level of confidence like yeah no like so you do want to speak some relevant english so people, people aren't just you're not just jabbering making noises it's yeah that's yeah. the part that's challenging sometimes but absolutely yeah you you, you need to know the alphabet you yeah know, you need to know what a period is and explanation point you, you know but it's like um I, I i guarantee that there are some authors that are famous that couldn't define what a semicolon is you know it's, yeah um and when you look at it that way, it's like, I think everyone, especially now, has the tool. We were talking about this earlier, where you were wishing you were younger, y- young now, because oh, the man. amount of tools out there. You know? So many tools. It's yeah. incredible. I mean, just see what Proco's channel's like. It's like, dang, there is so much stuff that I would have given my left hand for. Maybe not my right hand. That's my drawing hand. But right. I'd give at least the left hand to have access to some of that when I was a kid, right. uh, trying to make sense of it all. And, you know, like, forums were like the best. I remember conceptart.org or deviant art being on there and trying to get yeah, yeah. inspired and it's just like that's those things are yeah the, the tools now are great man and, and it's yeah, yeah. exciting to think of what the next 10 years in people's skill levels what resonating do, yeah. and then Absolutely. but also yeah the, the the relevance level hopefully more people can learn to enjoy art and that's a, a thing I wonder a lot about and in, in, like the shortcomings. I went to public school. Like I didn't. They never taught us how to balance a checkbook or right. pay our taxes or yeah, yeah. and to think That's that we common. learned some element of art. Like you know, you cut some posters apart and do some stuff like that. But to say why art matters, yeah. why seeing art in your life matters. I mean, right. for people that oh you know, it's cool to have some posters. You know, posters are art, really. They're designed by artists too. But yeah, yeah. you know, so many of my friends can just have these uh, simple things in their houses, and but it's not that that's bad, right. but there's a level of joy that can come from absolutely being around good art and yeah well i I was talking to brian taylor about this where it's Mm. like it's way like being an artist is like trying to live an ideal and when somebody does a beautiful painting it's like they were they were like their ideal for as long as it took for them to make that painting yeah and when you own a painting by somebody like a brilliant artist you own a little bit of their like Divi- like divinity or their oh, you you're... know chi or you know whatever you want to call it you know it's I, I can't I've been trying to figure out a way of explaining it to my collectors the, the, yeah. the, you know you say thanks you send a thank you card someone buys a painting but what they're doing is allowing more like life to happen yeah for me like in yeah. a way that is certainly like mean, we all some people find other ways of funding their creative endeavors but if you're selling to sell paintings for it I couldn't do it without them. Yeah. And when they choose for whatever reason to support that with their, their hard earned money, it's like, a, it is kind of like almost a spiritual thing. It'd be like, well, thank you. That means a lot. It's like, no, it means everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it right. is incredible. The fact that you saw something in what I made right. that you would part your money with it and share that with my life and right. allow me to keep doing this is like yeah. incredible. Absolutely. Well, and it, it, it's like, they took time to earn that money. Right. Yeah. And it's like that's actually a bit of their life, right? Like, like yeah, we're trying to time, right? Yeah, Literally, it's like they've it given me like, some of their life, and I've given them some of my life. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's an exchange of your time, right? Mm-hmm. And it's really weird to think of it that way. It's like if you live for eighty years or so, and it took you a month or two months to make that painting. It's yeah, like, you know, or even if it took you a year to make a painting, it's like that's one eightieth of your life you're giving to the other person. You know? Yeah. And it's strange. Or how many paintings do you do in your lifetime too? <sighs> And That's how many it. of them would be masterpieces? Like I said, it might be only 10% of what you might make will be considered something, like, right. really good. Like yeah, if, yeah. How many paintings any painter threw away in the trash? Like right. How many Michelangelo's got stomped on and thrown away? Oh, or, yeah. You know, like, they're all vital to him making those masterpieces. So for us as artists, it's like, keep making, keep yeah. making, keep making. That's our main job. Right. But 
it's so cool when people in society and they're if they're the wealthy people that do help make the decisions like that or for you know if you're trying to branch out and, and reach other levels of buyers like yeah. having them support you in that is is like i don't know it's like history in the making kind of right if it didn't they weren't so if if michelangelo didn't have the medicis then we wouldn't even know who michelangelo was yeah the medicis are just a part of the story right well and like how many michelangelo's were there too it's like maybe he, there are a bunch of michelangelo's but it didn't have the medicis i know yeah, it's yeah. it's that's why it's it's to me almost like creating education that is about even and i do it with some of my friends that are just young professionals that are starting to succeed now and like yeah taking them out to art openings and showing them art books and trying to get them it's like you know you you don't have to be an artist to appreciate art and you don't have to be an artist to start to understand nuances and learn how to critique like that's a fun thing i'm trying to get my friends to really it's like let's have critique time i want to hear what you think and i'm going to help you learn some words that help make that easier for you to be a part of this process and they take authority in it they start to step into it and like they're like yeah i I, this is the kind of art i resonate with and if all of us artist friends could manage to get 10% 10% of our friends that do that, the art world would be a lot better state because there'd be more art appreciators in the end. Yeah. So it's well, cool. And I guess my opinion on the best kind of art critique, it's not like technical stuff. It's more, it's never the technical stuff. It's oh. always just like a, you know, maybe like talking about their intentions and how they could have been more successful with certain, you know, maybe moving the light. Oh, yeah. Tell, tell the mood a little bit better or something. Or, I mean, for landscapes, one of the age old, oh, frustrations with it. You know, people will say, oh, that's, oh my gosh, that's, that's the Rimrock Trail, or that's the whatever trail, you know, somewhere, and you're, it is not that place. Right, <laughs> it's right. like, oh, I'm not going to tell you it's not that place, because yeah. fundamentally, it should get to a spot in, in at least some landscape painting, where it's like, that doesn't matter. If, right. if you resonate with that place, and whatever's going on in that thing brings you some level of joy, and, like, buy it, or make it your a part of your life if you want, but I don't need to, like, like, one of my favorite painters, like, Beardstadt or Thomas Rand, they always title paintings like a scene of the Rocky Mountains. Right. It's like, oh, little, yeah. what a what a get out of jail free card. Yeah, yeah. I want to yeah. start using that. Yeah, totally should. But, I don't know. I, I I think it's like a the whole painting thing is uh, like people see value in your paintings that you didn't intend. You know, it's incredible. Um, and it's yeah. like at a certain point when you put a painting out there, it no longer becomes yours. It becomes the people that are engaging with it and interacting with it. And, yeah. You know, it's like, um, if you look at any Sargent painting or Velasquez or Raphael, it's like, they represent more than just what the painting meant at the time. Like, a Sargent painting might have represented doing a portrait of a rich person. Now. Right, <laughs> right, that he didn't want to hang out with or, you know, yeah. just was forced into. Right, but now it's like a, you know, a, a beautiful example of brush strokes and color and shape. and Yeah, technical you know. mastery like we yeah, yeah. can only daydream of anymore. It's, yeah, he's... Right. It, and those are the things you can't ultimately control. I mean, that's for me, there, there's a level of like frustration I can get if I do think too existential about why I paint sometimes. Right. And when I get to trying to make something that's excellent and try to be genuine, right. you think maybe you'll, if you try hard enough, something good will happen from that. It, yeah. it feels a little bit like faith. <laughs> You're just trying to oh, yeah. go out on something that you, you want to believe is true. Right. Oh, you're almost out of fire there could add more but it would make it hotter in here it will make it even hotter in here i'm already boiling <laughs> yeah sorry about that man. no it's it's fine it's my fault for i should wear a tank top check that this is still going okay we good still running all right make sure this is hello hello oh yeah it's running i think it might be recording from the uh oh no it's recording from okay Little, little technical technical troubleshoot real quick yeah yeah uh, I, I think it's okay we'll, we'll figure it out um i don't know man all, all this stuff is so like well, well, i guess i still am a student but when i was like taking classes from people i w- felt like it was like there was a right and wrong way of doing art you know? yeah and I, I think that's important that's an important stage to have because you need some where to go as a student. yeah yeah but the older I, i'm getting the more i like the more abstract you know more feelsy stuff the more impulsive and yeah you know it's like i think that stuff is more honest and more freeing than something that's like just a you know just trying to be a beautiful painting just for the sake of it just to be worth more money or something yeah yeah there's there's my friend tyler which hopefully you're going to meet tyler murphy here before too long he's a bit of a amateur philosopher he studies all these books and brings up all these great ideas that i 
never smart enough to retain. <laughs> but one of the things we we went on about for a while was uh, this term. It's very hot, by the way. Yeah, just oh, we'll burn a knuckle hair off there. <laughs> he he was saying it's the butt and it's like yeah. this and that. Like to yeah. say you're going to overly fixate on on uh, technical skills and there's going to be some like holy land in that. It's like yeah, and there's a total loss of you know visual relevance yeah. they can end up being or something's just as devoid of value and right. maybe there's some like magical sweet spot out there that it's a a good mix of those things and yeah. but it's hard and when you start it's hard when you're making paintings too for the the <laughs> you know fine art realm is painfully close to the interior design realm you know so yeah. if people are there's fads that come and go and like you don't see any more of those jesus iconographic paintings on the walls of people's places you don't see them in the galleries right now yeah. they're down at the medici or right. you know down at the uffizi or whatever but you don't see them so much in the the galleries and that's just a weird nature of the time you know yeah. like if, if i was really passionate about jesus iconography i'd be in a be a little troubled tr you know try to sell them it's yeah, just yeah. like right. a weird part of trying to do what's genuine with you and dealing with the market boy it's it's really hard yeah it's really difficult i mean i think that there's like a a reality where you have to pay your bills but you're also an artist too yeah you know? and it's like a no matter how much you need to you know buy food there's also <laughs> like a you know if you if it was about money you would have done something more efficient oh yeah i, would, I always say that so I, I would just quit quit painting to make money yeah. and the fact that i get to do what i do and can be passionate about it it yeah. feels like that like kind of dream come true yeah. and it's taken five years of like suffering to kind of like not even i would say it's taking longer than that but if you added all the school time up but even just the time to go full time as a painter and not right. quit, you know, quit doing part time jobs and right. quit finding other ways to make money. And even psychologically for me to quit saying, if I can't make it, I'll do this. Yeah. Those are all narratives and fighting I had to do in my head and, and work with other young painters about where it's like, man, what the heck are we doing? Yeah. You know, and sticking it out is it's it feels almost like a starvation game. You just got to like make it just keep right. keep slinging paint, keep trying to improve and do it for this abstract level of reward that doesn't make sense but yeah yeah when going back to the billion dollar question it's like you're not like you're not doing it for money to, like if you if you want to be the best painter you actually can't be trying to be the best painter no you have to be doing it for those abstract arbitrary reasons you know oh it's such a which is I, it's kind of an oxymoron yeah it's it is. so ironic like, <laughs> um no one's gonna care what you have to say if all you want to do is make money you know it's like the thing that you want to do to make money is going to go out of fashion and mm -hmm you're going to be out of style, you know, you're not going to actually be able to make any money. You know? Or you make a lot of money quick and then you don't make any money and yeah. you got to rebrand yourself or rework on that. And, and even to say, you know, oh, Kenneth Yara's fine art is a brand and I'm working right. on it. Like all that stuff is, feels distasteful in right. regards to trying to make art and, and be, you know, but th there's like little levels of that to take in with stride and, and say, okay, yeah, like I am trying to sell what I make. And yeah who wants to buy it? Where are they? What, what are their values? And how will I be able to connect with them and resonate with them and build a type of community? Oh, hummingbird. That's awesome. Nice. Oh, oh, it's so beautiful. Wow, look. It's just chilling. It's right there. It's tiny, it's like a baby. Yeah, I mean, it's the, those are the cool things. Like those are like the fun questions of business. Yeah. But it's not about how I'm gonna make money, but it's about how I'm going to connect people and connect yeah. with people. Right. And that's the, I mean, crap, you look at off Facebook, they're, you know, the empire that just happened in such a short flash of human history yeah. and the whole premise of it is just connecting people Absolutely. you know like to yeah. say that that art isn't a part of that or that art isn't valuable i mean that's a, a funny uh thing i read during the covid times like if ever, everybody that says that art art is just, you know non-essential or like you say can be kind of like inherently meaningless if you yeah. can get down a certain aisle of thought uh like in this quarantine situation locked in your house right. if you can go ahead and imagine not having any music right. or any tv any video games. or any video games yeah. or any art on your walls or any furniture that looks like remotely yeah, pleasant yeah. or a f appliance that looks like the level of art and creativity that's right. we're automatically steeped in is so important and like absolutely yeah well it's like if art wasn't important it's like i've been all over the world and i see such a wide variety of how things are built and yeah know, how things are decorated and the aesthetics yeah and it's incredibly important i mean if you go to phoenix arizona you'll see you know like clay houses mm -hmm. you know clay houses and you know everything's nothing's above two stories you know yeah um whereas if you go to new york everything is 
70, steel, you know, chrome, you know, lots of money and, you know, all these beautiful, you know, de art deco -y type of things. And yeah, um, I, I love that variety and the fact that like everything isn't just the most efficient. Like if everything was just a concrete box, that would be way more efficient and actually might make people like, happier in terms of like their, oh, their comfort levels. But, yeah. You know, it's not, not really, you know, no, there's a, a good documentary. It, it, it got taken off of BBC it was by Roger Scruton and um, British philosopher guy. And he raffled too many feathers. He got in all kinds of trouble for making this thing, but it's called why beauty matters. And he talks a lot about the Bauhaus type of, uh, you know, the, and it, they're dealing with like really complex social things, like trying to tackle the hierarchy and the bourgeoisie and the, the, the hyper elite controlling and ruling everything and how much art and architecture was influenced by that in human history. But on an abstract level, we're all like, man, those buildings are beautiful. Yeah. They're fucking sick. Yeah. That's like I can't, cool. like, it's really, I would never even propose that question. You see the Basilica and they're like, how do you feel this is built by slaves? It's right. like, is this lesson? It is art. It's just like, yeah. oh shit, that maybe, I don't know. That's yeah. hard. Like it's, it's yeah. yeah. Well, I, I think art is one of the, like everything is, has a, like nothing is perfect. No, oh, nothing God. is binary. And, like the Vatican is a good example of that or pyramids or any of that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, or your iPhone, right? It's like, <laughs> yeah. it's like everything is, has this tinge of immoral, immorality to it. That makes it like that worldly. Is it worth it? You know, it's like, I, I guess so. I live like an iPhone. I, I not getting rid of the things that I have. Yeah, know, but, uh, yeah, and people are still coming from all over the world to see those buildings, and yeah. and something in that resonates with the human spirit deeper there. And and those those kinds of, I like to hope that maybe with through some of those things like Bauhaus, and they're going to make these concrete buildings that are affordable, and people have better places to live. They're not in shanties anymore. Right. Like humans all around the world are generally getting further lifted from poverty. Like the World Health Organization and NATO, everything's working to try to help that stuff out and make some improvements yeah. for human suffering. Right. And that doesn't have to negate that beauty matters. Yeah. That, that beauty helps people. It doesn't have to be an ugly concrete building. Right. Can it be more beautiful and how? Can it involve local artisans doing something right. minor to just... Like those are things I, I kind of dream about in that that small art appreciation that everybody can be a part of, or that yeah. is just appreciated by society. It's not something that's only left for us art educated people that know about it. It's Absolutely. like, oh man, you gotta have art. It's gotta be in your life. Yeah, well, I feel like there's a deeply spiritual element to all this stuff. Yeah, you know, it's like a like you can't explain why a painting makes you feel the way you feel. You know, when you look at it obje objectively, again, it's like wood and oil and. Or you can say, well, it's because of the person or their face or the color there or whatever. And it's like, right. but there's still something you else under there. Yeah. yeah, seriously. It's like a Vermeer can, painting, you know, it's like. Well, it, you, you can take a photograph of something and it's like more literal, right? And right. Maybe more beautiful in a, like, in a technical sense. But it's not more like those Sargent paintings at the Met are some of like, you know, they have like a, like a religious experience around those paintings. Yeah, you know? they do. And it's like, th there's something going on there that I actually can't explain, you know? Yeah. Um. And it's it's cool. I think it's important to have that some something like that in your life, where there's something so beautiful and re resonates with you so fundamentally that you can like, you know, instead of like, you know, it's worth doing that over eating cupcakes and ice cream and watching <laughs> cartoons. You know, yeah, it's like that. That's like the easier dopamine hit. But for some reason, like looking at paintings and doing art is more rewarding than. Oh yeah, you know. I mean that. Back to the thing, which, you know, it's just the the quick quick fix is very rare it almost feels like physics to me like it's just the faster something might be yeah. the more than likely the less the less like abstractly good it could be yeah i thought i think of that a lot of actually in like, when i had the type in new york city and, and be able to walk and commute places and here in montana you just drive everywhere you have to drive everywhere right. and maybe that's why i'm so prone to go on hikes when i right. it's a big part of my life because to go slow and to look and see and be a part of the surroundings you're in it's like the anti-american way you know like you're supposed yeah. to be in your car jamming to music going fast right happy and blind and Spending eating french fries gas. yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. like, like it's like no i'm gonna walk on my feet they're gonna get sore and tired and i'm yeah. gonna look around and like i'm gonna trees, be a, right yeah or i could get eaten by a bear out here I, I'm, I'm gonna be so present where i'm at and i had that in new york too i go to some neighborhood but i'm i'm scared you know i'm yeah. in this like rough neighborhood and it's like i'm have to be present right now and it's a crazy, refreshing feeling compared to being just numb. And absolutely, I well, and again, I, I don't know. It's like people live for, you know, eighty years, and when you really like 
take that out and i mean i think most people live like they're gonna live forever yes you know? yeah absolutely like most people don't live like and I, I guess this is like a potentially arrogant thing to say but i think most people don't live like every day is precious yeah it's like every day really is precious it's like the fact that you know we were born in a place where we don't have to worry about being killed or we don't have to worry about polio or starvation or yeah we have running water oh, and my siblings are still alive yeah i'm lucky for that yeah well and it's like you know and it, it, like, like we're like that would be lucky you know if you're born in america and you know you die at you know 40 or something for a long time but yeah like there are people that there's been realities in the world where you you're born and then you are a slave and then you die at like 15 yeah you know? well, imagine the all of human history it's, it's not a very fun picture yeah and it's it's really there, there there's been like 108 billion people that have been have been alive really yeah, i've never yeah, heard yeah. that I've, I've always wondered what that number might be it's 108 billion uh, about they they, they, they holy think, yeah like geez. so many so many people like too like too many people you know wow and it's gonna keep going higher and higher and higher you know and it's like um it's not too long before there's gonna be a trillion people that have survived and lived you know Jeez. and yeah. it's like everyone is living those independent having independent thoughts independent lives and yeah you know it's like trying to make sense of everything yeah i i mean when i was younger i'd make these insensitive jokes toward you know just being a dumb kid but yeah the older i get and the more i think about like you know making those kind of jokes and thinking about that stuff it's like wow that's a, that was like a person you know, it was like a human yeah. being that was like us right um the fact that i'm I lose sight of what to be gracious for is I think that's like the worst possible thing I could do yeah oh that's one of the easiest things to do too that's the yeah yeah like like browsing reddit too much or you know uh <laughs> just getting angry at some dumb thing on the internet oh man it's like giving up your peace yeah seriously so I, I think that would like being an artist you're yeah you're you're kind of I won't say you're charged with that kind of like mission but you kind of are like it's a big part of what you're gonna think is gonna resonate with what you make and or those yeah. things are correlated together and, and so be mindful of what your thoughts are and what you're fixated on and, and what you're what you're wondering about even like what you're curious yeah, about yeah. and it's good to be around people to challenge that sometimes it will you know I've got a lot of peers and they'll yeah they make me wonder if maybe what I'm doing is wrong or, or right. maybe there's levels that I'm missing or, or depth that I could attain uh, it doesn't even apply the technical stuff, and then there's the technical friends that help you keep keep up on that. And yeah. so, for anybody that's you know listening to this podcast, they're artisans or artists that like just keep those channels open and and yeah. stay curious. Well, and it, I think it's part of it is like knowing that you do have weaknesses, and like there are going to be things that you just can't pay attention to. Yeah, know? it's like I, I don't know. I know almost nothing about accounting. You know, yeah, yeah that's oh, probably man. about you know it's probably pretty important. You know, <laughs> somewhere my accountants might yeah they're. I can't, don't even try to explain it to me. It's yeah. so right. hard. Yeah. Well, and it's like, I, I don't know much about like, uh, how to like build a house or unclog a toilet or, you know, fix an, like fix an electrical system or any of that kind of stuff. And yeah. It's like, I have so many, like, I know almost nothing. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm like a, I'm like a moron, you know, in a lot, not, not, not really, but it's like everyone's a moron in their own way because you can only focus on so many things at a time yeah and you're better off being an expert at one thing that's that is a uh a dynamic of trying to become a very good landscape painter you know it's like all right i got i could do some portraiture i had some of those skills i just didn't have the love for it right so deciding all right i'm gonna i'm gonna be this is my my thing this is what i love yep. the most and right. it's not that it's the only thing I love. I love all kinds of stuff. And sometimes I don't really love landscape that much. I get rained on and right. stormed on about they're trying to paint or make beautiful pictures. And it's like, you know, landscape can be awful. There's yeah. insects that are constantly eating you. Right. And you can't put all that in the painting because you're applying to this higher sense of, you know, the spiritual element of those places. But yeah. sometimes you're there and it just sucks, you know. Yeah, right. So it, those are those weird dichotomies of just like. What, what, well, what? And you have to make a sacrifice. You know, it's like I'm going to oil paint landscapes instead of doing figurative stuff or instead of doing all this other stuff that i'm interested in yeah you know? and it's like that's a hard thing to do and i think that's part of the thing i really admire about artists who it's like i have so many interests that pull me around in so many different ways and mm -hmm. to choose one is like you know it feels like i'm sacrificing part of myself you know? yeah. and, and you are in a sense you are yeah it's it's that's it should be a very meditative deep place that that comes from i think yeah and when someone says oh you're gonna choose a style 
like don't just you just sit down and look around at the business world and say oh yeah well it looks like figures are selling well or it looks like well, landscape paintings are easy to do i should get into that it's like I should be a country singer if i want or i could be a yeah. it's like like what can you sit with yourself with for the next 30 or 40 years where do you think you won't ever get bored or what allows you room to grow in a way that, that feels like it fits you your soul like yeah. that's the those are the cool questions that I've, I've had the time to take take looks into you know and and, and the experiences of life helps shape too you, you, know, you can't like, i don't know if you can do it when you're 18 years old maybe you can i definitely couldn't have done it then right um but yeah no, so so i mean i was looking at your sketchbooks earlier and mm -hmm. it seems like a lot of it is just writing you know a lot of it is just like <laughs> writing down your thoughts and your plans oh, and stuff, man, your thoughts your lists your yeah it writing is a big part of my life i think and yeah. and trying to stay connected like the visual world is like painfully incomplete you know to it's like just a shadow of everything especially when you're looking at a painting which is just this like filter of whatever you're seeing or experiencing it's like right so far back but yeah being a professional i think involves a lot of organization and, and that's a part that wasn't taught in schools again same thing it's like i didn't learn that at high school i didn't learn it in art especially the art academies you know yeah. They right. kind of taught you to sit there and just work on drawings, which is a huge part of, you know, what I do have to do. But holy cow, you got to do all this marketing stuff. You got to do all this other, you know, like spiritual stuff. Yeah, you got to do all this stuff, other stuff. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, art, art Spirit is one of those books that I think I'm yeah. very thankful to have read because it does tap into some of that like deeper level learning and that right. it is kind of journey-esque. You know, you're going in a direction with it or, you know, it's not like there's some truth out there. He said, it's not like you're going to reach some apex of technical skill and or i'm going to reach some spiritual level in this where i'm like that's it i've yeah. i've ascended to this final level of, right. of being a painter or being an artist or whatever it's, it's just a continual growth and and staying engaged in that for me definitely involves language involves writing yeah and it involves talking like this like it all comes together if you it's just, all related yeah, yeah. And, i mean I, again when i was a, a student the only thing that i assumed was uh that the only way to become a pressure professional meaningful and be a professional and live a meaningful life as an artist was to just become really 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 good mm -hmm. which is true in a sense but like um again so much of it is it's like the people that i know that are illustrators or concept artists or fine artists it's mm -hmm. like maybe 60 to 70 percent of the actual painting is planning out the painting you know playing you know writing down your thoughts doing composition studies oh yeah you know. oh man so it's preliminary work. I, I, I love that one of the questions that you get from people, especially out plein air paintings, and, you know, oh, how long did that take you? Right. And the answer that is the true answer, because you can say, oh, I've been here for 30 minutes or 40 minutes or an hour or two hours or whatever. It's taken me every single painting yes. and every single drawing and every bit of development that I've had to do as a human being right. to be here. Like yeah. The very fact that you don't know how to do this is because you've never spent the time doing it and yeah. a level of time that i put into it is it's hard to say that oh i've worked on this for two hours therefore it should be worth forty dollars right it's like no no i've worked on this for thousands of hours like yeah. it's right that's what the excellence looks like and, yeah. and what it comes from but yeah i'm with you you know there's there's just the but and piece where you're trying to master technical skills and you're also trying to master some of these philosophical concepts or or, or even like for me it's like habits and and techniques of like Sorry, I'm just messing around with this. Did it work? Yeah. Is it muting again? Oh, oh, see? Oh, oh. I think that mutes it. So if it's full red, it's like a record. I, th I think so, yeah. There we go. Okay. Cool. There we go. We're, we're on for sure. Sick. Yeah, that's, that's a, I mean, it's fun. It, like, you know, most people have to show up to work and just put in hours and yeah. be done with it. And those kind of thoughts are left for their journals or their spiritual time. And I'm thankful to have all of those things be incorporated together. It's, yeah, it's a, right. It's a whole lifestyle approach, kind of to yeah. to being. Right. <laughs> Bless you. Thanks. But I, I think at the same time, it's like you know, your entire life is around your thoughts and the beauty of you know who you can and like what your potential can be. But at the, we were talking about this earlier, where it's like it's actually way. I think it's it's equally as difficult as any other job. You know, it's not always perfect. Where yeah, like when you mess up on a painting, you have no one else to blame but yourself. You know? mm -hmm. Or when you mess up on anything, it's like. You could have done something better. You could have. You could constantly overanalyze how you could have done something differently. Yeah. Oh, Whereas, man. like, if you're a postman or a lawyer or you know, you know, a nurse or a doctor or whatever. Yeah. It's like, 
there's so many things out of your control that could contribute to the success or failure of whatever you're working on. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's I mean, the painter. Yeah. You just, there's nothing else to, to look at besides your own ego, all the stuff that's close to everything that you made. And yeah, that, that's the part that I think it's good to have thick skin. I'm glad for some of the academia learning with that Russian fellow who really right. laid on the critiques. You learned how to, to toughen up a little bit in regards to having things go badly, but it still is just, yeah, it's painful. And I think it keeps a lot of people from trying, right. you know, like, you know, we've, we've talked about the point of these educational things or the point of getting people to engage in art. A big part of it's just overcoming fear. Yeah. That's Most a, of it, I think. I mean, again, like we went painting the other day and I think, um, you know, the best thing you can do to become a better painter is just to paint. Like there's no one that can show you the, the magic trick that'll make you <laughs> or the thing that you can do. Unless every... you buy my size five round. Right. right. Ken Yaris round. No, like, yes. your easel. Right. Yeah. It's like, then you'll, be, then you'll become a good painter. Yeah. Know? It's like, that's, that's not how it works. You know, it's, it's like, snake oil. Yeah. Um, it really is. I mean, that's like the definition of it. Like, yeah. I, I think, you know, having better tools does help, but you know, just having, you know, we're talking about, it's like having less barriers of yeah. entry to just doing it. That's the way you become a better painter. And the reason that's important is the less barriers of entry you have, the more you're actually going to do it. Mm -hmm. And when you think about it that way, it's like, why do you ever not paint? You know, it's like you get to go outside and hang out. And, you know. <laughs> yeah. For me, it's great. But it's all right. I like, you know, some Instagram for followers and, you know, they're like, oh, I live in Nebraska. I would right. do anything to go outside and paint mountains. It's right. like, yeah, that's tough. I don't think I'd go to Nebraska to paint landscapes. Like, right. that's my personal preference. Uh, you there's, might have something else that will inspire you there. But uh, there's tons of stuff in Nebraska you can like barns. And yeah, get some yeah. guards in there. You know, yeah. some some Wyethy style fields of right. wheat or you know, like this to create meaningful art is. I think, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm particularly stoked on mountains. I live in a particularly awesome mountainy place. Yeah. Uh, but that that kind of beauty is is all over the place. Right, and the the goal of the artist, or, or in the pursuit of doing art, man, you get to enjoy that stuff. It's the best. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I don't know. I I think that anyone that complains about like not having something to paint is mm -hmm. like, you know, it, it's kind of an excuse. You know, it's like, oh, if I just had that pencil, I oh, I, yeah. I would draw. You know, if I just had these tools, I would draw. And I, I I think there's like a famous, it might have been Rembrandt or, you know, so one of the fa great artists of all time was like. You know, you can make a master painting with a broom and some mud. You know, <laughs> which is like true, right? It's like a that's awesome. Yeah, and it's like it, it's all about shape and value, and, and like you don't need um, five hundred dollars in brushes and paint. And, no, you know, fancy linen easel or canvas and stuff to you know make beautiful pictures. And it's true. The Russian guys, that was one of the other things you paint with a, you know, size eight filbert, paint the whole painting with that. You don't ever need a different brush than that. It's yeah. like, ooh, I do. I've, I've resorted to lots of different types of brushes now because I enjoy the variety. But some of my favorite brushes are my older, crappier ones that are just caked with paint. Yeah, yeah. They're right. so fun to paint with sometimes that yeah. I just like, yeah, it's great to, great to stay in that. Like, you're not looking for some artist to tell you the secret thing, maybe, but. Right. You're looking for that artist to give you permission to try something like that, where Absolutely. you might say, "Oh, cool, yeah, maybe I'll try my crappy old brush again." Yeah, well, I, I think the benefit of of the snake oil is, you know, I shouldn't call it snake oil, but benefit of having those, like an artist that you look up to, is you get to see somebody that's already done it, so you have like a path laid out for you that you can go and you know, you'll know it's possible. It's been yeah, done. yeah, yeah. So it's like, oh, I, I'm not necessarily wasting my time, you know. Um, obviously, there's less potential reward there, but in terms yeah. of like the success and or the success rate of it, it's going to be way more likely to succeed than if you just do it completely on your own. No, yeah. No instruction. And, you know, I, I, again, I, I, I'm not bashing art school at all. I think it's important to go to art school. But, Me too, yeah. Um, like, I, I guess it, at a certain point, you need to, like, be confident in the process of learning things and figuring things out on your own rather than figuring out somebody else's formula for, yeah. for, for success. Just, I mean, again, I, you know, I came from the public school like wing of things and that was never encouraged that kind of thinking or that kind of pursuing like to say that you're going to work like yeah you're going to like you're kind of trained to be a robot it's like just do this do this thing right. and you'll be successful and just solve this one problem and you'll be fine and it's like memorize this fact and you'll be fine and like right. the that other type of pursuit is just way harder <laughs> yeah right. and it's i think it, i get it why education would just farm it out to those basic things like memorization and repetition and stuff but yeah. at, at the end of the day when, you, when you're gonna make cool important things even like you said with like business becoming a good business person like you gotta think creatively and 
push the realm of, of your comfort and your fear. I got a little quote that's on my little board that's everything you want is on the other side of fear. And just that's a good reminder for me that I'm, if I'm doing something in a place of fear that nothing really awesome is probably going to come from it. Yeah, yeah, right. It, 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 it's incredibly complex. I think it's uh, one of those things that it, it's both incredibly simple and incredibly complex where it's, it's like... Easily you know, said. Yeah, yeah. I, I had one of my teachers in school say it's like, you know, to do a good painting or drawing, you just move your arm until you have a good painting or drawing. You know, just, <laughs> again, objectively true, but not not really. Yeah. Um, way, 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 way more complicated than that. Oh, man. I always, always thought good painting is good thinking. Yeah. And that was a good... And I, and I know what I can get stuck in stinking thinking, and maybe that's what the journals are all about or the, the writings and everything. It's just like I, I got to get myself out of there because one, my... It's not that I'll have a bad day. It's like I could go through a whole bad wing where I don't make any good paintings or yeah. you know, I won't ever get out of it if I don't start thinking outside of that box. So fighting the stinking thinking is a big part of what I do. And Absolutely. It's challenging, yeah. but... Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I don't know if I have anything else to talk about. Yeah, no, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, this has been fun, man. How long have we been going for? It's about an hour. Hour, perfect. Hopefully the, the folks have followed along and enjoyed any of it. And if... I'd be so curious what people I because you, know, you work with so much with the game industry people like just how much right. it's always been a romanticized industry to me that like like oh how many of these parallels are there how much tons I existential mean, crisis is in of, here as a game tons. designer I mean it's, it's like a imagine you're working imagine if you were surrounded by a hundred other artists that are better than you or as good you know and it's like but they're way better than you at other things and you're way better than them at other things you know oh, it sounds exciting it's but really exciting but like, it's really scary it takes a lot of pressure and you know it's very competitive and mm -hmm, you know it's, mm -hmm. it's difficult you know um but at the same time it's like uh you become part of a larger whole as an artist which isn't necessarily bad but for somebody who's more of an individual thinker yeah that can be challenging for sure but it might not be as good yeah um, they're definitely like I, I I would recommend it for anyone that's curious about it just just to try it out but you know it's definitely a uh, like it's definitely a, a different environment than being in Montana you know, <laughs> I think I'm sold on the Montana part yeah, yeah. here in my garden that my garden with my family my whole family works on this place out here that's yeah, it's yeah. part of our our happy place until the snow starts falling again yeah and then the mountains man right well if uh, if you're ever interested in working in games, if anyone's listening to this, they can, you know, give you, you know, <laughs> some concept work. Then oh god, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Out. Yeah, pull me out of the mountains. See nice. if you can. Yeah. All right, guys. Enjoy. Thanks cool. for listening, and thanks again for having me on, yeah. Tristan. It absolutely, means a man. lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank, thanks for being on this. Yeah. Heck yeah. Thanks for the marshmallows. Absolutely, man. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Cool. Sweet.